Hello, my fellow car collectors. You know, uh, today, when one particular car popped up in the at Hagerty's at the legendary cars dealership, I immediately wanted to buy it and uh, test it and uh, to make this uh, live uh, review of the car. The car that I'm talking about is the Nissan Skyline Super Silhouette Group 5 of 1984 actually I had this car some time ago and I even used it for some ah yes actually I won that uh, menu book where <laughs> there is a very hard uh, classic race I don't remember the number of the menu and the name of it, but I believe each of you remember that uh, quite uh, challenging race, a uh, set of races where you have to use uh, cars, uh, I think, uh, made uh, before 1992 or something like this. So <laughs> I've been fighting with that race uh, until, especially on that American track in the desert uh, and uh, I, I was no I was not lucky to win that race on any of the cars that were available for me uh, at that time until I bought this uh, Skyline super silhouette <laughs> then <laughs> then within a the time I just sold it because I needed uh, credits to buy all the cars that are required for the uh, this three legendary cars uh, trophy. <laughs> all of them were extremely expensive. Not the most expensive ones, but uh, still expensive. And I must admit that uh, those uh, three legendary cars, you know, they are one of my still one of my favorite cars in the game the Jaguar XJ13 the Ferrari P4 uh, Ford Mark IV they are fantastic cars they are very detailed they are very realistic they can be used for 700 pp uh, grinding events easily and they can win races and it's just a pleasure to drive them. If, if, if you like, I will make a review of all of them or of each one of them within some time. But I must admit that <laughs> to collect all of that, uh, all of those uh, three car, three legendary cars, I had to sell almost everything that I had. Mm, and I just don't regret those uh, three legendary cars. They worth every hour of grinding and worth uh, every effort in the game but still uh, that will probably will be another topic but now we will we will talk a little bit about this uh, fantastic Nissan Skyline Super Silhouette 84 so I sold it uh, and now I'm very much excited to have it again and hopefully I will not sell it anymore and then I will show you and I will just show you and share with you my thoughts why I think this car is fantastic and why I love this particular car so let's check it and the dealership all right this is group 3 688 power points liter engine with 561 brake horsepower from 2 liter engine can you imagine uh, it's great that the car is very light so it its weight is 1005 kilograms so it's nothing 
So you can imagine how powerful and how the uh, weight to power distribution is. How how cool is it? The design is nice. And it, it you know why it's called the silhouette. It's called the silhouette because it's it, it just it, it it it's kind of empty inside. This is the silhouette that kind of resembles the uh, normal somehow resembles the normal street version of the uh, Nissan Skyline. Uh, let's read about this. Have you ever heard of the Fuji Grand Champion race? It was really popular in Japan during the 90s, during the 80s. If you heard of the race before, you probably know what about Super Silhouette race car that competed in the opening races for those events. The Super Silhouette races were hosted under the Group 5 regulations of the time. While the exteriors of the car maintained the look of a production model, that's what I said before. On the inside, there were purebred racing cars developed for competition. The Nissan Skyline Super Silhouette proved to be the most popular car in this series. Famous for its flaming side exit exhausts, it is an iconic car that is still fondly remembered by many fans, including me. And also, uh, he mentioned that uh, the bad guy in, uh, in the legendary dealership, he mentioned that uh, Group 5 cars. And uh, <laughs> I just want to add the sh short uh, uh, information, additional information about 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 this car and, and uh, the Nissan, the racing Nissans of that time in particular, in general. Uh, in early 80s, uh, Nissan was on a mission. It was fighting Toyota for supremacy in the Japanese market, trying to prove itself with high-tech road cars and flame-spitting race cars to draw people into the showroom. And it was making a car for itself. And uh, the Nissan's big racing draw were its uh, super silhouette cars. Built under Group 5 regulations, some parts had to carry over from road car to race car, but they were mostly cosmetic, <laughs> as you remember this guy told. So it's just the exterior that resembles the road car. Because uh, many Group 5 silhouettes ran on custom tube frames and chassis. And Nissan had a trio of cars that looked uh, like the road cars. It was it sold to the public, but uh, under the skin were from the ground up race cars. There was the Skyline, this one, that is available now in the legendary show, uh, show dealership. The Sylvia and the Bluebird. Together they were called the Nissan Turbo Corps. That was the name for all of them. Uh, unfortunately, there are no silhouettes Sylvia uh, and there is no blue sil silhouette Bluebird uh, in the game. But luckily we have this Skyline Super Silhouette. So let's purchase it. Change to this car now. I will just remove the push list button from it. Let's go to the garage and watch at this fantastic car. Though, as you see, the displacement is a little bit more than uh, 2000 cubic centimeters, so actually, 2 liter engine. And the max power is 561 brake horsepower with a weight of 1005 kilograms. Obviously, this is a turbo engine with a huge turbo lug because now you can 
take 561 horsepower from the 2 liter engine. This is something crazy. And this car falls under the regulations of the group 3, so you can use it in any of the specific group 3 events and in online races as well. So as we mentioned, uh, those Nissan Turbo Corps, one of them is actually in front of our eyes, uh, all the mentioned three cars shared the same basic design and the same engine, a simple 2 liter turbocharged 4 cylinder with the race only dual overhead cam head. Uh, the engine called the LZ20B and these cars may have shared badges with road legal coupés but they were good for almost 570 horsepower around as much around as much as a Formula 1 car of the day. And it, indeed this car should have a huge turbo lug, of course. These cars, the Nissan Turbo Corps, and this one in particular, were terrifying. They look awesome, they shoot fire, they are reasonably high tech and also relatively straightforward to design and run. It's easy to understand why Nissan felt like this trio of race programs was a winning strategy. So, this legendary race car from Nissan is in our hands and we will give it a ride. It looks mean it looks so aggressive it is wide it is you can immediately realize that it is powerful fast aggressive and especially what i like the most in this car is this interior you can see with all the gold gorgeous with uh, all the buttons and and and, and the uh, analog devices, analog speedometer, tachometer, this looks, everything looks cool, really. Usually I'm not a fan of the Group 3 cars, um, I just like when the interior is more like classic and uh, I like these uh, an analog dials, not like this kind of calculator style. Uh, dials of the late 90s, 80s, and even beginning of 2000s uh, Group 3 cars. This one looks kind of classic, and I love it. And let's try it on the test track. So we will go to Japan. Let him be the high speed ring. Full course. Let's check the nice weather. So you may see how beautiful the interior is. All the dials, all the devices, the gorgeous.
it looks awesome I just love how how this car looks inside let's hear its engine uh, it's funny <laughs> the, the the tachometer works you know it clicks like a like a like a watch like a clock <laughs> uh, it's funny but it's actually uh, the, the polyphony digital the, for all kind of you know all the old cars that had the tachometers it just copied the way how they work so they, at those times they were not working like now you know so they're not they were not smooth so it just goes like like a like a watch dial <laughs> it's funny Okay, let's give it a ride. Oh, I love the sound. Oh, you may hear the sound of huge turbo. This Turbo charger sounds awesome. So we are on the high revs. The car can handles very well. This is a pure race car. And it's so comfortable to drive. I'm driving with zero traction control, so no traction control at all, but it is very easy to handle the car and to control it with the accelerator, even on the PlayStation DualSense controller. So it's a great race car for beginners or for those who just play on the controller. It's so pleasant, and you feel on the controller, you feel all the switches, all the vibrations. And really, I just can cannot stop to talk about how cool the car looks from inside. It is far way better than almost any of the group 3 cars especially of that age with the monochrome or green calculators ish calculate calculator style displays that you when you sit in this Nissan silhouette you see the real dials you see the real devices you no know, kind of digital nothing everything is alive real and tangible so I just love the interior of the car I love how it sounds and I love how it drives it is fantastic it is really pleasant to drive So let's check. I know that many of you they like to drive with this kind of camera, with the chase camera. So let let's see how this car looks and chase camera. Obviously, it is wide. It is aggressive. It is it is so cool. It should spit flames. It's its sound is cool really and this is only a stock version 
I think this car can easily be used uh, on Lehman grinding at Lehman grinding event and any other 700 pp events I believe it can, can be tuned up to 800 pp performance points very easily so it's a good good choice and a great pick for any of the car collectors who likes classic vibes who likes a real simple raw powerful cars of the past that are not kind of filled with all the electronic assistant assistance that are just very straight to the point they are kind of honest with you these kind of cars no aids just you and the machine and it's great trying to, to drift it and you see it's you know it keeps the track perfectly it's not easy to drifted so that means that, that he sticks to the ground and it handles very well you see. no problem at all and the car behavior is, is great it might not be as responsive and as fast as modern group 3 cars of course but It's just awesome how it is. This is the history of the automotive industry. This is the history of of races. Ah, no. So it is strongly recommended to all the car lovers and all the players in GT7 if you still don't have one buy it it just popped up today and the uh, at the legendary car dealership and it will be available I made a crash because I've been checking how long it will be available at uh, the legendary cars dealership it will be available for the nine for nine more days from now so that means since we are recording this video on the 24th of august 2023 it will be available by by the 2nd of September so you still have time to make the decision and to buy this perfect car uh, I just love to drive cars uh, and the first person view and you see this one is gorgeous inside it is so alive it is, it is beautiful and it drives perfect So let's watch how it looks in the replay mode. In my opinion, it is awesome.
and there are so many other custom styles made by other players that you can apply to this car to make it not Tamika Red, the original one, but any other style. There are so many of them, this car is so popular, so you can customize it in many different ways. And it sounds great. And it just is so pleasant, so nice, so comfortable to drive race car. So it is, it is, in my opinion, it is a must-have for any car enthusiast, for any Gran Turismo 7 player. Thank you for watching. I think. I hope my video was useful for you and see you next time.